All right, so this is build log number two, and uh, we're gonna be putting the EK FB Asus X99 monoblock on here. This is the acrylic and nickel. Um, it's see-through top. I'm gonna be running some uh, Mayhem's pastel white through this, so uh, you'll be able to see that in the block, and it's gonna look like milk. Who doesn't want to cool their computer with milk? Uh, so here we have the Asus X99-A uh, version 2, I think. The first version didn't have USB 3.1, uh, but this one has USB 3.1. 10 gigabits per second. I don't have anything that even uses USB 3.1, but uh, future-proof, I guess. Um, I've already opened this motherboard and installed the processor uh, because it came out of my other system. And uh, I'm using the um, Intel 5820K 6-core uh, i7 processor, uh, 2011, socket 2011, uh, version 3. I'm going to be running 32 gigs of Mushkin 2600 MHz DDR4. Uh, but we'll get that to the later. Uh, that'll be in another build log when I'm putting the system together. But today, we're putting the water block on this, uh, so let's get started. Okay, so get this out of the way, and I'll just do a quick unboxing of the EK water block. Inside you got that, instructions, some thermal paste and thermal pads. Um, Allen keys and nuts and some screws and the water block itself. I've already opened this, by the way, if you're wondering why the seal's broke. I just wanted to take a look at it and see how it is. Um, I'm gonna have to rinse this out first before we get started. So I'm gonna go do that now and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I rinse this out and uh, there's a bit of water in it still. Uh, so I got these temporary fill, fill caps, drain caps, whatever you want to call them. They're not drains, they're just covers. So I'm going to cover these up so I don't get any water on the motherboard. And I'll take these out after I'm done and just let it air dry. Um, this is the little sticker over EK, it's like a protection thing. I'll take that off later. So let's get the motherboard out here. I guess I don't need this box either. Make sure you ground yourself on something metal before you touch the motherboard. So as you can see, I have the processor already installed. Um, I'm not going to make a video on that. It's super easy to put a processor in. If you're thinking, if you're watching this video to think about doing water cooling, then you already know how to put a processor in. Um, so the big trick with this is we need to get this heatsink off, and I'm pretty sure these four screws go into here, but they're skinnier and they fit through it. But I was looking on the back of the motherboard, and I punched two holes through already to see if there's anything on the other side. It's kind of scary because there's not actually any holes made, but um, they're just covers, so if you punch through it, you take your screwdriver and put it in the hole here, and push, you can see that it goes right through. And there's nothing really there, so I'm assuming they've decided that that's where that's going to go. So we'll punch all four holes through. I've already done these two bottom ones. Because I wasn't quite sure how this was going to work. And as you can see, we got four holes punched through there now. Here, here, and here, and here. And we need to remove this back plate right here. These two screws. So take your Phillips screwdriver. And take those off. Now, I'm not sure if I need to save these screws or not. I think it comes with new ones. But you're going to reuse this back plate. So we'll take these screws out. 
Okay, so that back plate just comes off like that. Put that aside. And that's that. Now this heat sink should just fall off. Maybe not. Maybe we'll need to pull it off. Just rock it lightly back and forth till it pops free. And there, it's off. So you can see there's thermal pad on there. Uh, they gave us new thermal pads, so we'll be putting those on here as well as on here, I think. Um, so that's off. This is a very easy install. So we need to take this off. It says, please peel. Ooh, nice and shiny. That is polished really nice. And we're gonna be putting some thermal paste on the processor. But first, let's cut some thermal pads for these VRMs. some thermal paste on here. I'm gonna do this little bead thing that everyone's showing to do, which is not what I've normally done in the past. I generally like to spread it on, but I guess that's all everyone's doing now, so I'll just follow the lead. All right, now to install the block. So, we're gonna line it up with the four holes that we punched that are in this bracket right here just like that and there it is it's on there so flip this around you can see our four screws sticking through there and then we need two more in here so it looks like we take these nuts here So we put a PVC washer under each one of these and then the nuts. Wow, these are really close to the RAM slots. I wonder if that's going to affect the heat sink. I'm going to grab a RAM and check it. So this is the RAM I'm using. It's got uh, a heat sink on it and that's why I'm kind of nervous. It's pretty close to the edge here. So I'm going to put it in see if it's going to fit. And if it doesn't, then we might have a problem. And this heat sink might have to come off. No, I think it's okay. It just clears it. That's good. All right, phew, that was close. So what we need to do now is put this back plate back on. And they gave us new screws, so I'm going to use them because they look sweet and they've got Allen key, an Allen key head on them. The best part about the mono block is that it goes all the way up to the top and cools the VRM instead of just the block for the CPU. Because um, when you're overclocking, you're going to be delivering way more power from these guys to the CPU 
and you're going to want that cooled. So it's really nice to have a little piece that goes over that. And uh, it looks really cool because you can see the channeling goes up and around this way and then out here. So that's it. We got the mono block installed on the motherboard. And the next step is putting the system together and putting in the rads and the reservoir and pump. Um, probably the next video will be the reservoir and pump and the rads. And uh, then I need to figure out how I'm going to run the tubing. I'm going to do hard tubing. Uh, I have no idea if I have enough, but I grabbed a bunch and hopefully I have enough. Otherwise, I'm going to have to order some more. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.